Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you're doing well. For this week's Midweek at Main video, I'm going to look back very quickly here at what Rashad, not only what he did, but how he let God, honestly, just really from the very beginning of the message throughout the entire time this weekend. Rashad, you know, if you, if you use the metaphor of an airplane, he kind of just came right off the runway, straight up into the air, full altitude, and then just stayed there uh, the whole way. And that altitude was a really honest reflection on and an honest challenge, if I can say that, to every single, myself included, every single one of us, to be more honest than we are prone to be about what our relationship with God both affords us and the lack of that relationship costs us. And, and what he really, I think, more than anything helped with, you know, the language at the very beginning, just being very clear, concise, and honest about you know, he used that phrase, ain't about that life. And, and the distinction of understanding that what our lips and our life do needs, to, you know, the, the very definition of authenticity is that those are not distinguishable. That the life and the lips say the same thing. And not only that, but say what they ought to say. First Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 17, 18, and 19. We're just going to read those quickly here. And if, huge word in the Bible, if, setting up a, but also if not, there's, there's an if not path here. So keep that in mind because Rashad spent a great deal of energy and focus helping everybody think honestly about the if not side of this as well. But, and if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Literally, God gave you a perfect, unquestioning pathway and opportunity fully at His expense. Now, is there a cost to discipleship? Yes and no. The cost gets smaller every time you think about it honestly, because what God has provided for you is incomparable compared to what you can bring to the table and what you rely on without Him. It's incomparable. It doesn't even make any sense. At the same time, as long as we don't think about it, well, then we are allowed to feel uh, as if a life without God isn't that bad. We're allowed to fake feel that we can figure this out on our own. Except there's literally nothing in our lives, especially when we look at this text and we, we're honest about the role of the Bible in our lives. We're just lying. And, and uh, one of the things that, that happens uh, frequently, I mean, this is often with Jesus' teaching, is a conversation on the idea of spiritual deception. Uh, Jesus, probably as much as anything, speaks most clearly to the warnings and the presence in people's lives of spiritual deception and self-deception at that. In Jesus' most widely known uh, sermon, the, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, from Matthew chapter 5 through 7, he ends the sermon by contrasting two types of people. Two types of people who, on the outside, seem equally obedient equally consistent on the things that they value. Matthew 6, Jesus says, when you pray, don't pray like these people pray. Well, he automatically says both people pray, both people give to the poor, both people fast, both groups of people. He's speaking to two groups of people about two groups of people, and he's telling his disciples in particular, when you do the same things that other people are doing, that isn't it. It is the why you do them that God is looking at. Uh, two radically different motivations of the heart are present here. Uh, there's a, there's a, a pastor who uh, recently posted a, a quote that I think is helpful in this area. Uh, Self-deception is not the worst thing that we do, but it is the reason we do the worst things. Self-deception may not be the worst thing that we do, but it is the reason we do the worst things that we do. Not understanding who we are. If you, this text is clean, right? If you call on him as father, who, by the way, judges impartially according to the most fair, just being in 
all of the cosmos, the only person that exists that actually is right all of the time, the only person in the cosmos that actually knows the truth, the whole truth about you, the only being in the entire cosmos, in all of existence, in all of history, the only being that's actually right. And you might be like, well, yeah, but I, I, I agree with God. Nah, you pick and choose when that happens. We all do. That's why the transformed heart, the transformed life of obeying Jesus, trusting Jesus, believing the gospel, believing the king, believing what he says about us in our weakness and our failings in our flesh, but also what he says and promises to us by faith alone. All of it. He's right. He's the only one that's right all of the time. This is the person who we either do or do not belong to. And this is why Jesus and God are always always dealing first with the heart. Always first dealing with the heart. And and so most of everything out of all of our lives, looking back at this last Sunday with what Rashad taught, kind of has to come to this one conclusion question. Out of everything Jesus has said to you, your whole life of being a part of this church so far. You know, you've, some of you have been here for, for many, many years, and some of you maybe are very new. This upcoming Sunday, we are celebrating our, our 14th anniversary of a specific gathering of, of what God is doing in our midst, in this particular space, in this particular group of people. But you and I are, if we're honest, that group of people has changed. Some of you are new. Some of you have been here for five years, seven years. Some of you, 14 Wherever you are on that spectrum, the same question lands right now. How's your heart? Really? How are you and God doing? Really? Trust starts in and through the heart. Always. Your most inner who you are, your inner being, your, the, the most authentic, objective realities of you, that space, who occupies it with you? Is it the world? Is it the, is it the, the impulses of your flesh? The, the desires to fit in? The desires to fake it till you make it? The desire to... Or are you as... as he mentioned, uh, Rashad mentioned in Titus 2.14, or are you given now in your heart, are you motivated to genuinely from the inside out to do good works for God and others? Or do you do those things in order to be accepted by God or others? Do you do them because you are accepted, because you call on Him as Father, because He has permanently placed you in His loving, tender, gracious hands, if, if that is the motivation of your heart, then amazing things. But if the motivation of your heart is to stay in His hands because you're fearful that He will let you go at the first sign of your weakness, or if you are convinced that God will only keep you in His graces as long as you behave perfectly, then you probably are still learning how to figure out how to submit to and believe the gospel versus believing the religion that says you must do in order for God to bless you. You must do in order for God to accept you. No, Jesus did so that God would accept you, and He did. This is what you have to rest in. So now your life can be given to prayer and fasting and giving to the poor, giving your whole life to this this life of being with God. Everything we have, everything we do, everything we are is authored by Him to begin with. It's just... Normally, we reappropriate those things for our own end. And God has now come to us in Jesus and has provided that end in all of its glory perfectly. Something we could never do. So quit striving. Quit striving to find your fulfillment in relationships or what other people do or do not do for you or in the social status, the constructs that exist around us. Stop chasing these things of the wind for they are that. 
and give yourself fully to the immeasurable grace found only in Jesus Christ, his whole life. How's your heart really doing? Are you legitimately focused today on taking all the good that God might possibly bring through you into the lives of those around you? Or are you still violently holding on to somehow be made just a little bit more important in the lives of others, to be seen as something quite great in contrast to others, or to at least be a better version of your old self. Give up all of those things and live in the full space of being totally received, totally loved by God Almighty in Christ Jesus. It's the good news. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, not a spirit of competition, a spirit of fear, laziness, contentment in worldly things. Embrace the Holy Spirit of God whose fruit in your life bears out love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Do we not want more of those things? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immerse your life in the life of Jesus. This week, right now, let your life and your lips say the same thing. Jesus is my King. I am perfectly held, perfectly kept, perfectly loved by God the Father, embraced and immersed and dwelt by this Holy Spirit, living a life of following after my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll see you this Sunday, 10 a.m., for our celebration. We'll have a meal together immediately following the service. The meat is provided. Please see churchatmain.org or open your Church at Main app available on the Google platform or the Apple platform to download for any more details you may have. We are so excited to celebrate this Sunday. We have a lot in store. We'll see you then.